Hello, welcome back to Wyvern Minis. I'm going to continue on from the previous video uh, where I started doing something that I thought was a bit strange, which was using Cajun Flesh Tone as the highlight colour on top of these dinosaurs that I've been painting. So the Mesozoic Creatures box set from Tamiya. I'm doing a very quick dry brushing project on them, um, showing how you can get some really quite nice realistic sort of tones on these creatures without spending an awful lot of time. Uh, dry brushing is a great technique for doing this. Um, all in all, to get all of these assembled and painted, it probably took me about five hours. Far quicker than actually making these videos, but you know, here we go. Um, so I started off with the, the Infant T-Rex here and really getting underneath it to try and give it quite a nice kind of pale belly. The intention here is to make it a red-brown colour overall on top. Um, so I used a, a nice light brown colour to dry brush the whole thing and then I'm using this flesh tone underneath and <clears throat> even though it's a flesh tone intended for you know, human skin it actually can be used in other places just because it's called one thing or intended for one use doesn't mean you can't use it elsewhere um, so I think it gives a really nice kind of natural highlight to the belly which sets it up really well to then have the red put on uh, on its back and then moving on to uh, the Oviraptor uh, my intention is to make the Oviraptor kind of yellow, uh, fairly bright yellow, but not garish, um, kind of natural. So using this flesh tone to highlight the brown up, um, just to give it a real good base of sort of shade and highlight to then start putting the yellow on top of, um, which I think worked out really nicely. And now the Parasaurolophus, I got this really nice blue colour. I was really pleased with um, using that bright blue on the top to get this sort of interesting skin tone um, really like that and I'd left the belly as just the scaven by dinge dry brush which was very dark um, and that was my initial plan was to have a dark belly and a, a nice light blue uh, back on the thing um, but as I was using the uh, the flesh tone I thought Do you know what I actually I'll give that a go underneath because that might be interesting and I'm glad I did because it ended up looking really really cool um, so it's worth sometimes just changing your plan as you go along revise how things are going depending on what the model looks like um, but yeah in this case I did a very light dry brushing straight on top of the Skaven by Dinge and you end up with quite a different quality um, the the skin tone painted on top of that Skaven by Dinge looks very different to how it does on top of the brown for the the T-Rex um, and it contrasts really nicely with the blue on the top of the Parasaurolophus so it's really interesting to see the different results you can get when you're dry brushing depending on what colour is underneath. Um, you can use the same paint um, but you can also you can paint it in different ways either making it a bit heavier or a bit lighter or you can uh, you can paint it on different base colours and you get a different different result. And I really like the sort of natural feel you get from this Parasaurolophus now. Um, so yeah that was a that was a real good change. I'm glad I, glad I did that. I also changed my mind a little bit when it came to the, uh, the crocodile um, and decided to give it a very, very light touch of the flesh tone on top of the, uh, the scoots along its back. Um, and yeah, I was initially happy with the fact that it was this light, nice green with a kind of grey brown underneath. Um, but this real light dry brush of the flesh tone on top of the green really brought out the relief on those, uh, you know, those scoots. Um, and I think it looks brilliant. Um, so again, sometimes as you're going along, change your plan, uh, adapt, and uh, you can end up with some really good results. Um, it's, and it's worth just experimenting with a dry brush on different things. For this crocodile, it was really, really light touch. You can see here, the brush was really, really dry, and I was very light in the way that I was applying it. So it's, uh, it's different to how I applied it on the other models and it really just catches the very, very prominent bits, um, which I think, yeah, ended up looking really cool. So with those guys done, um, I went back to the Oviraptor and I had lightened up the Oviraptor with the flesh tone, as I said, and I wanted to make it yellow. So I used a, a very bright yellow, but again, dry brushing it very gently over the top of this um, model, which had already been painted brown and then flesh tone to lighten it up it ended up with a real nice kind of I think mellow yellow colour it's bright enough that it looks like a, 
an overwrapped yellow bandit running through stealing eggs um, but it still looks kind of like a natural skin tone I think so I was pleased with that so that's just dry brushing the yellow all over quite gently on top of uh, the previous two coats so it's three coats of dry brushing on this overwrapped in the end um, and then I did some purple stripes on it as well just because I thought that might look uh, interesting and um, yellow and purple together are quite nice colors um, and then I moved on to the um, the feathers on the Archaeopteryx and I used the yellow to dry brush on the wings just to get a little bit of a different color there and again this is highlighting the, the fact that you you end up with a different result depending on what's underneath so the uh, yellow dry brush on top of the blue gives you a slightly greenish color um, it's not it's not actually mixing the colors but the the end result you end up with a bit of a mix because of what is showing through from underneath because the dry brush is not so opaque um, so I was really pleased with that that was exactly what I was after on this um, Archaeopteryx just to get a real um, interesting kind of bright color on the feathers there um, I, f I made sure I focused just on the on the sort of flight feathers uh, the longer ones towards the edge of the uh, of the wings um, and the the T-Rex so I've already uh, dry brush the T-Rex in red um, on the top so you've got that nice kind of fleshy belly and then the red on top and just to give it a little bit more pop in exactly the same way as I saw worked really well with the flesh tone on the crocodile did a very very light yellow dry brush on top of that red um, I was a bit worried it was going to make it look orangey but it didn't it did give it just a nice pop of a, of a highlight um, and I think that again is what you've seen in the previous video going a bit lighter than you think you're going to go um, when you're dry brushing can sometimes end up with a really good result and doesn't look as light as you might worry it would do um, and yet overall very pleased with the results here um, and pretty much there in terms of painting the models themselves and can move on to doing the basing so as I said in the first video um, my intention here was to do pretty quick kind of basing technique I've um, painted the rocks that I stuck on with a scaven by Dinge and then I've highlighted them up with a bit of a lighter grey um, just a bit of gentle dry brushing on those the barbed bracken that I got and stuck on from Gary's Workshop used the same kind of green tones I used for the um, uh, some of the, the green creatures and then highlighted that up again just a little bit gentle dry brushing with a lighter green um, going quite light on those ones um, but the rest of the base is just black um, because it's had nothing done to it and I'm going to use this Sterland mud um, texture paint, which um, I don't use texture paints all that often. Um, I normally just go for using sand and rocks and things like that and paint on top of those. But I bought a I bought a set a while ago which had a few texture paints in, and I've used things like the Valhalla snow, which is really good. Um, for I did some snowmen and stuff for D&D, uh, &D. um, so putting snow on the bases that worked great. Um, and I have used this Sterling mud before on my, my other uh, Triceratops. Um, they're slightly odd sort of things. They're not like using normal paint. Um, I think you can make your own texture paint by mixing up paint and glue and water, you know, um, and sand. But uh, yeah, these are pre-made and they are quick and easy and the results are really cool. Um, I'd quite like to try using the ones that kind of crackle and do lava effects um, I've not experimented with those yet um, but I might do those one day that would be interesting um, but this this mud I use a metal tool a sculpting tool essentially and just scoop it on um, it's it's that simple um, you can use brushes but it tends to clog up the bristles so don't use a good brush for them because it will ruin it use a dirty old brush I think something like this is good. Um, I think Games Workshop sell a kind of rubber tip tool for doing it, um, which is far more expensive than something like this, which I got cheaply, got a set of these really cheaply off Amazon. Um, the, the metal tools have got different ends on them, different tips, so you can scoop with one end and then tamp it down with the other. And that's essentially what it's doing. It's trying to sculpt an interesting base in a way. Um, you can just paint this on essentially paint it onto the base um, and get a, a just a slightly textured flat surface but I prefer trying to get some sort of relief in there trying to get a bit of you know hints of footprints or where the mud's been churned up because as you know if you walk through a load of mud 
um, it's not going to be nice and flat it's going to be all bumpy so the nice thing about this texture paint is you can build those layers up um, sometimes it's best if you wait for it to dry a bit before you put a bit more on so you can let you can put some on then let it dry and then stuck stick on a little bit more or you can just put it on pretty thick um, and if you get some pretty thick bits and smush it together you can let that dry and you end up with quite a nice interesting surface on the base um, you obviously need to be a bit careful because you've already painted your models you don't want to start ruining your models by then getting mud all over them um, you might want to get a little bit on their feet to show they've been walking through the mud um, but you know it, it's it's quite easy to accidentally uh, overdo it with that trying to get underneath the brackens a little bit of a challenge and that's where these uh, little metal scoopers metal tools come in quite handy because you can you can sort of jam them under quite effectively without causing a problem so that's all it is it's just scooping it out of the pot and, and putting it on the base not very complicated at all really um, but very effective and then what I decided to do was to um, do a little bit of dry brushing when it was dry it took quite a long time to fully dry um, but I mean, you need it to be fully dry before you do this next stage but I took a little bit of a lighter brown I think it was actually the same brown I used as the base coat for the, uh, the T-Rex and, and the Oviraptor um, take that brown and uh, just do a little bit of light dry brushing again being careful not to get it all over the bracket and all over the models um, but a little bit of a light dry brush uh, because you end up with these interesting textures from the texture paint uh, ridges and lumps and bumps and things like that um, which just grabs the paint really nicely so a little bit of dry brushing on that just brings it out again gives it a nice pop um, and then uh, and then I put some tufts on I've got some nice swampy tufts um, which are quite long what I did with those is tried to put them near the um, where the stones touch the base that's a good place where you can imagine that bits of uh, vegetation will grow also sometimes on top of the bracken uh, I found where I'd stuck bits of bracken together to uh, to make it taller sometimes I didn't really like how it was looking in the middle um, so a little tuft in the middle made it look like you had some bracken and some other vegetation growing together and that was pretty cool um, again didn't want to put on too much to completely um, swamp the model themselves you know we needed to still be able to see what was going on with the model and not have it obscured but um, yeah a, a good few tufts here and there um, I think looks really cool and I like finishing the bases off with a nice black rim um, just looks good on the table I think um, so then they're all done really and the only other thing I did was to spray varnish them I use uh, Munitorium varnish from Games Workshop uh, and you may have seen one of my previous videos where I was um, having issues with that when I was spraying some Tyranids and um, that was because it was a really old can of varnish and I didn't shake it up enough beforehand uh, the weather was also not very good for it it doesn't particularly like the wet weather um, so for these I made sure I really shook the can to death um, shook it for absolutely ages and then did very very light coats two light gentle coats um, rather than a thick coat and that actually worked uh, very well so um, pleased to report that although I had some problems before um, I was able to use exactly the same can and it worked really well um, I think it's worth using that it fixes your tufts in place nicely and it just gives a bit of protection to the models um, so yeah I think overall they've ended up looking really nice I'm very very pleased I really enjoyed painting these models and as I say it was a very quick process easy um, something that anyone can do um, as I've mentioned before, um, Byron Artist Opus is fantastic at dry brushing. So if you want to learn a bit more about uh, advanced dry brushing techniques, check out the Artist Opus things. Um, he um, taught Peach on the painting phase a thing or two when he had his um, interview with them um, a few weeks back. And uh, you know, Peach is a veteran army painter, so he knows what he's doing. But he still had some things that he could learn. I mean, we can always improve on our painting techniques. Um, but as I always sort of think, you know, it's, are you happy with your models? Um, are you able to use them in a game or, you know, use them however you want to use them if they're display pieces or whatever? Um, and, you know, was it a good time doing it? Um, and did they take an appropriate amount of time 
Some people want to spend ages and ages and ages over every tiny little detail, and some people want to get things painted a bit quicker. And this dry brushing technique, I think, is a really good balance for me. It was a perfect balance of speed, um, taking about five hours to do them, all told, um, and fun. My daughter could be involved, and she had a she had a nice time doing it. Um, and uh, and yeah, I've, I've ended up with models that I'm very pleased with. I like the natural look to them. They look great. I can't wait to use them in a game. Um, so uh, hopefully that's been of interest and been something that, you know, take away what you can from it. Um, adapt it to your own painting style. You don't have to copy me. You don't have to copy anybody. Do your own painting. Um, but you might see some bits and you think, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Uh, and most of all, have fun with it. I think that's the, the key. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with these. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll leave the final words, actually, to uh, to my daughter. Bye. I love the dinosaurs because I love them. Did you enjoy painting them? I enjoyed painting them and spray painting them. Thank you. Bye.